this one. A couple key things about level two. First of all, um, raise your hand if you just recently moved out of basic care into intermediate care, so I can just get an idea. Okay, good, so about two-thirds of the room. Okay, that's good. And also raise your hand if this is your first level two workshop. First one, oh man, not many first-timers. I've gotta come up with new jokes real quick. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> in intermediate care, a few key things about network care before I talk about the main topic that I want you to realize relative to the whole picture of, of, of network care. One, there's a number of, we still have music on? Yeah. We do. We have to do something about that. Um, we have somebody do something about that. Julia, yes. can you shut off the music? Thank you. Um, uh, a couple of research studies to mention. Network care has had more leading edge research done uh, relative to network care than any other thing in the chiropractic profession. Um, one of them, a research study done in the mid 1990s um, at University of California Irvine Medical School, where they took, it was the largest population study in the history of the chiropractic profession and actually. In, in rel relative to the type of study in any healing art, they took almost 3,000 people for their retrospective experience of their quality of life self-reporting in terms of uh, changes in terms of network care. And in that particular study, they had, as a result of that, um, <coughs> people reporting physical state changing, less physical pain, less tension, stiffness of the spine, improved allergies, skin rashes, fewer inc incidences of colds and flu, improved mental emotional state, um, improved positive feelings about themselves, less moodiness, uh, less anger, more interest in life, improved ability to think, less anxiety, improved response to stress, less stress relative to family, um, health, finances, and work, improved life enjoyment. They went through a whole category, a whole range of, um, and, and improved overall quality of life, a whole range of demographics. And it was done by the U University of California Irvine Medical School, which is you never see chiropractic studies done at a medical school. But they said, as a result of the study, two major things. One, it was something about 80% of people had marked changes in their quality of life. Understand that's very rare for that large of a population group in terms of any healthcare discipline, especially with the no negative side effects, because we know about that. Second thing, relative to healthcare in general. Second thing that came out of it is the actual, when they looked at the data, the neurobiologist that was doing the study said, relative to what we're seeing, people had changes as early as one to three months. This was almost his exact quote, uh, if I get almost verbatim, uh, or changes in their body as early as one to three months, and no upper limit to the level of quality of life changes, because mathematically, for people that are all the way three years in care, they were still improving up to three years in care and showing no signs of slowing that, which is something that they, he's never seen in any form of healthcare. The reason being, most healthcare is not healthcare, most healthcare is disease care. It's aimed at getting rid of a particular condition, problem, or situation, but not really making you more well. Actually, of our $3 trillion that we spend on healthcare in our country, less than 5% can be related to actually keeping you healthy. Okay, So uh, it tells you a little bit of where you should put your focuses in terms of taking care of yourself, and that's obviously why you come to see us. Um, so the other thing relative to that that's very exciting was that they broke down those 3,000 people into different categories of people that were receiving care. Some in that one to three month category, and they graded the amount of quality of life change that those had. Then they took another group that was in care three to 12 months, I want to say, if I remember correctly, and graded the amount of quality of life change that they had. And then they took the, another group, they, were, they put 12 to 36 months together and graded their quality of life. They found the people that were between 12 and 36 months had the greatest changes in their quality of life by far. It just exponentially increased the, the longer they were in care according to the study. Now this is very pertinent to the subject of intermediate care because what they said when they reviewed that was, or what Dr. Donald Epstein said when he took that data, so well, that's nice, but I want some of the people to have changes earlier than 12 to 36 months, and how can I help them have those changes earlier? What's different about the people later on in care? And what are the characteristics that they're showing clinically? So then they found that those people predominantly, and I'll get to the jokes when I come up with <laughs> <laughs> those, 
people predominantly in the 12 to 26 month category, okay? They, they had two things that changed in their body, which is they had both the breath wave moving through their body and the somatopsychic or body mind wave. Those are the people that had the greatest changes in their quality of life. So at that point, they reintegrated how network care is delivered to put into different levels of care, basic, intermediate, advanced, to help people progress, to develop the breath and somatopsychic waves most effective because those were the key indicators that when people had those, the connection to the greater breath through their body and connection to their movement and their body's movement making correction in their spines, that had the key to the largest quality of life changes. Okay, so the, another, and before I go through basic intermediate advanced care, the other, another re research study that was very significant was they took people with network care, put them in an MRI tube, and took an, a fun, what's called a functional MRI of their brain and um, to measure how the, the, the um, efficiency of their nerve system to do a particular task. So they put a person in, measured how efficiently they could do a task while they're taking an MRI of their brain, and then they took them out and gave them a network adjustment session, and then put them in the MRI tube again to see if they could do the task differently, leaving a certain amount of time to make it val valid for a study. They found the people that, the, the per people, um, after the network adjustment, their brain worked 20 to 30 times, not percent, 20 to 30 times more efficiently to do the particular task. And again, that was done at a medical university. That is amazing, because if you think about what does brain efficiency relate to in your body, just about everything, okay? And whether it's a kid trying to do better in school or an athlete trying to perform better, you know, or someone trying to do better at work in terms of providing for their family, you could go through their whole spectrum. And of course, the brain is involved with healing, okay? So that always makes me think of like, this is your brain, you know those commercials, this is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs, and this is your brain, and this is your brain on network? Okay, so that was a joke. Okay, so, and that was a new one. So, um, <laughs> the, another thing was then all of that spurred more grants and research studies, and one of the things they're doing now is you know the EMG studies that we do on you to, to, to characterize your progress. We put the sensors on you to get single spots at a certain interval, like what those muscles are doing now. They said, well, they rewired those to actually stick them onto people's bodies as they're adjusting them. So they stay on there with little adhesive things. And measure um, the muscle contractions that people have in, during their adjustments in response to getting network care and mathematically quantify it. They actually published and determined with chaos math things I will not begin to describe, okay, <laughs> or pretend that I could. Um, but say that from that information, they could literally quantify the people from basic to intermediate to advanced care. Their nerve system is literally evolving. Their nerve system is literally showing greater levels of organization, which if your body is going to talk about your body self-correcting, your nerve system has to better organize your spine to do that. So the process of care that we're delivering as we're adjusting your subluxations, getting your body to release tension, is literally helping your nervous system better organize your whole body so you can maximize your level of well-being. There's nothing else on the planet in terms of healthcare that actually can, can show in documented research form that, their, that your, their response is actually delivering that, okay? And it's your nervous system actually learning.